Today, we're gonna to be taking Blood Angels to the next level. Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days on this glorious Friday morning in the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California. Got another painting tutorial here. Um, the spiritual sequel to the Blood Angel series, Captain K is gonna be done by the end of this video. We're gonna take him to the next level. Last week I showed you how to get a Blood Angels model to the tabletop. Tabletop standard, next level painting style. The week before that I showed you how to work reds up with the airbrush using secret weapon miniature acrylics. Today's easy, simple tricks basically to how to take something to the next level without almost any skill, just technique. It's gonna be easy and it's gonna be fun guys. Captain K is gonna be looking for a new home. He's gonna go to somebody who watches Twitch. So you're not gonna wanna miss twitch.tv next underscore level underscore painting it is our live tutorials live tvs giveaways free swag t-shirts hoodies everything so definitely do not miss that shout out to my man ollie and jonathan you guys came in clutch this week patreon is my personal crowdfunding page i cannot do it without you it's how i keep the lights on also the longwar.net is the home of the battle reports the fastest growing library and video content related to warhammer warhammer 40k all that dope shit Let's get into it. Let's do this thing, guys. Here's Captain K from last week. We took him to a tabletop standard. Now I'm gonna show you how to take him to the next level. There it is. That is how you take him to the next level. That simple. <laughs> Good tutorial, guys. Let's go home. All day, every day. All right. Well, obviously we gotta go back in time for me to show you how we did this. You might not even see all the things we just did there at first glance. So all we have here is a bunch of clean airbrushing and very clean washes. Nothing else, no detail really has been done. Now let's begin painting the model. K-Door Red from P3, it's a really solid red. We're gonna start picking out all the edges and we're gonna just line it out. We're basically tracing this model right now. I like to find the right angle and scrape the paintbrush across those angles helps me keep those lines really straight. Move the model as often as you can to create the best angle with the most stability. Especially on these little sections here that are round and curved. Yeah, that's just a nightmare. And you can see this Kato Red is popping. Even though we used Kato Red in our original mix, we washed this guy down and we muted him out, got that wash into some of the details, creating some nice subtle transitions, but we didn't go crazy with a normal airbrush transition that I like to do. This is a little bit more traditional OG third edition style paint job with a real clean red with some natural transitions very subtle muted almost rust tones to build up and then they were going to come in with some extreme edge highlights but not not crazy extreme you know like they're going to be nice broad lines that are subtle enough to the color uh, close enough to the color that the broadness of these highlights isn't super crazy you know, like it's not abrupt, even though they're broad strokes. And then we'll narrow the focus once we line all these edges out with a little bit of ancient Chinese technique. I'll let you guys try to guess at what the ancient Chinese technique is gonna be coming up here in a minute. So here I am just flipping him around. This is a very important part of the model, his chest piece right here, because this is a focal point. You're looking right into his face. So here, we're basically gonna trace these half circles, these semicircles. Nice, clean, watered down. We're gonna do a couple of layers. Let it dry, come back in. We don't want it to be thick. We never want the paint to be thick, so we always use thin down paints and do two strokes, three strokes even if we have to. We do so much airbrushing, it just takes away from the airbrushing if you have these textured lines. Same deal up here. Dragging the flat of the paintbrush across the hard angles. That's always the easiest. Like these semicircles are a little bit more difficult. They take more control. Here we are coming back for another pass, like I said just a minute ago. Same deal, come in. Don't forget the fingers, you know. That shit's a real important uh, part to create an easy pop. These curves right here are a little bit harder. That's why I like to drag down if I can get that angle. I use my pinky to stabilize. You see I'm using my pinky stabilized against my thumb as I create these uh, nice straight lines. That's a huge part of the, uh, the the process there, man. Like, you got to get that extra point of stability. 
Not always easy when you're on camera, but this is definitely something I do to help. Same deal here. These paints are real thin. They're real muted compared to, you know, they're not super abrupt because they're watered down as they dry because paint is transparent. It's going to mute out. So that's why if you want, you basically just do as many passes as you want to keep bringing it up. Same deal, but don't forget his toes, all that. Um, here's a part that a lot of people will overlook. These grieve. Basically, you want to come in here in the cut and you want to draw this line up and then start artificially, you know, deciding where the line is over this knee pad. These models are amazing, but sometimes on these like clamp pack style models, there's um, a little bit less detail in certain areas to create other detail in other areas. Troll Slayer Orange is the ancient Chinese technique. This is one of the best oranges in the business. We're going to mix it in a little bit with that Kador and we're going to create a nice orangey red. And we're going to use it subtly here, watered down as all fuck. We're going to create some center point highlights on this chest piece. Like I said, this chest piece is a focal point. Look at its best. Same deal. You want to cut some of that orange into the extreme edges on whatever the fuck this part is called. The shoulder pad under the shoulder pad. Same deal. Just literally Tr you know, retrace everything we just did with a little bit of orange and it's going to make it pop that much more. And that's basically where I'm going to leave it as far as like extremeness. I can keep doing this two, three more times and make these highlights ridiculous if I wanted to, but that's not the vision I had for this model. I had a slightly darker red with nice third edition style highlights. Now here's another way to create contrast. Go back to a shade, a wash. We're using a brown wash here. And we're going to pick some of the areas out and just wash the the line between the two areas, you know, basically the borders. So you can create contrast two ways, dark or light. So we just created contrast by going up light with the highlight, but I decided in some of these areas I wanted more contrast, but it didn't want it to be brighter. So I made the dark areas darker. Makes sense, right? Same deal with the hand, the fingers. This is a, this is a great tool. Argax Earthshade is a great wash this is not the gloss wash you guys have seen me using uh, i don't always use the gloss wash i want to use the matte wash here because i don't want to deal with it being shiny until the end especially since i'm not doing like anything that doesn't require uh, extra surface tension to be broken up this is literally just i mean i could do this with brown i literally could do this with thin down brown but the wash is already thin and already dries really easily so I'm using the tool for the job, but you could literally do any of these things, any of this type of washing with like burnt umber. You can do it with charred brown. Literally, that's all a wash really is. And paint is transparent, so it doesn't matter. So now I'm going to do a second pass after that first layer uh, wash dried, because I really want there to be a nice border there, a nice definition on this armor piece. Same deal up here. I'm going to basically tr retrace my trace steps in a couple places. Now, here's some ancient Chinese technique that's n that's mixed with some new Chinese technique. Tire black, quickly becoming one of my favorite colors of all time. This is a secret weapon acrylic. A little bit of blue green. We're making essentially a glaze right now. We're using them really thin down together. Ne like the black is not even really a black. And we're adding a little bit of that blue green to it and we're making it very thin and we're just creating a natural little blend, a little transition by thinning it down and walking the wet edge up toward the middle. So this will be a nice little natural transition to this black shoulder pad without making it gray. You know, it's going to be very subtle when it dries and then we're just going to build off the edge and we're going to basically intensify. You see here in the 90 degree cut, now we're using less water, more paint same mix and then we'll do it a couple more times adding more of the blue to the mix and then eventually a little tiny bit of white here and what we'll have done here is created a nice smooth transition without having to use the airbrush there it is now we have a real cool og third edition style uh black edge highlight that has a little bit of blue mixed into it with almost no gray so this is like the old school man that's what i love about it same deal on the bolt on the storm bolter here. Same exact protocol. Uh, same deal on the cock rope here. And we even went in through and did a uh, a little bit of this on the pipes 
and the grip on the hammer. And here I'm going to add a little bit of white back into the cock robe just to intensify and give it that extra contrast because everything in the middle of the model is going to be looked at more. A little bit of pure white on the very tips. It's watered down so it's going to blend really easily into the blue and the tire black mix that we made. Looking his best. Same deal here. We kind of made a little bit of a glaze with that tire black and that uh, blue green. And we're using it to draw into the areas of the cape to add more definition areas that we couldn't quite airbrush there it is drew a couple of crisp lines exactly like we did in the bolter and the cock rope and the shoulder pad he's looking good all right a ancient chinese technique aluminum this is a model air color from vallejo all right basically we're going to edge highlight rapid fire all the silver on this model super easy we washed them the wash went into the dark areas, left the raised surfaces brighter. Find those brighter areas, make them even brighter, creating even more contrast. Catch the angles, the flat edges, and just draw nice clean lines. All right, now let's close this bolter out real quick. I'm gonna go out of order real quick. Reaper New Gold is a great color. We're gonna mix it a little bit in with our aluminum, and we're gonna finish out this little Aquila pattern uh, blood drop insignia, and we're gonna just feather the edges of it out to a nice bright gold with a little bit of that aluminum mixed in, creating nice definition and nice contrast. There it is. That's typically out of order. I would have done all the gold at the same time, but that's basically what we're doing for all the gold on this model. All right, back to the silver. We're gonna hit all the chains, everything. This is easy because the chains were darker, then they were washed, and now we're hitting it with a brighter highlight. We're creating multiple layers of contrast on a very simple low detail area of the model making it look its absolute best contrast all day every day now we got to create contrast on this big hammer this is going to be easy first step dry brushing we painted it with a dark darker metal blend washed it black now we're going to dry brush it with a very bright metal I'm going to grab some abaddon black and i'm going to do something real fun real interesting og day right here i'm going to start doing some kind of comic booky designs i'm going to block in some like fictional sheens right i'm gonna manufacture some cool stuff here draw a couple scratches on the side basically i'm channeling old x-men comic books by jim lee you know with all the crazy scratchy gleaming effects i used to love that stuff and so now i'm going to take some of that aluminum and create an under highlight on these black scratches creating the illusion of scratching like depth the highlight has to be underneath it to create that look now back to the top we're going to draw some of those OG pow, like that crazy just comic book blast, you know, just coming out of one one corner here. A couple of, you know, almost a sunburst pattern here real quick. Love it. Then we're going to grab that aluminum again and we're going to create a quick little undershade on those two. Kind of box it out, clean it up. We did a little bit there on the feathers in the back. Just create some cool comic book effects, man. I love that shit. It really makes me happy because I'm doing more of a third edition paint job anyway. All right, it's time to get Swifty on this guy's head. Uriel Yellow, we're gonna have to manufacture strands of hair because there's almost no detail on this guy's hair. A lot of the Space Marines are like this. Even though there's exaggerated details everywhere else in the model, the hair has almost none. So we're basically taking thin down yellow and we're just letting you know, our paintbrush just kind of trace the tips back into the center of his head. And we're just basically manufacturing the sweeps and in the hair strands. We're gonna use yellow rust from Secret Weapon. We're gonna thin it down and almost use it as a glaze and kind of blend back against that really bright yellow so it's not super abrupt. Very thin down, couple layers if you have to, to get it here, to get it to the same place I have it at. And you can see it's doing real good work here, just blending that yellow back in so it's not super abrupt. But we gotta create even more contrast than that. So now that we're happy with our strands, and how we've walked him back to the center of his head, we're gonna go back to that bright yellow and we're gonna reinforce, create even more contrast on the tips that are falling all over his forehead. It's all about contrast, guys, like I told you. There's only two ways to do it, really. Darker or lighter or both. And we usually do both here at Next Level Painting, which is how you create simple contrast or over simple paint jobs to create magnificent, you know, showpiece items, um, models you can take anywhere and be proud of. All right, sunny skin tone and um, P3 skin tone. I don't know what it's called. 
Uh, we mix them together. We create a nice blend. And remember, this guy's face was just one skin tone with a wash. Well, now what we're doing is painting by numbers. We're tracing the raised areas with a new brighter mix. That is it. We're not overthinking it. We're using a thin down mix of these two colors, which is brighter than even his raised areas that are that were left alone by the wash. We're gonna create a nice highlight and then magnify it by as many um, layers as possible. Like basically two passes. You see, we brighten it up there. We created more contrast. Let the dark be dark and the bright be bright. All right, OG mode, arcane blue. Last week we used Meridius blue and we just painted all these gems with Meridius blue. Now we're gonna blend arcane blue black back into the Meridius blue. And then we're gonna use white. We're gonna mix that in and we're just gonna slowly nurture a quick blend, an easy blend. It's not that quick, but we're nurturing a blend in using arcane blue and white. Just, you know, tracing down one side it takes a little bit of time to do, but it's it's fun and I like it. It's not that crazy dark side, you know, dotted white style. It's this other style. And you see here, we have now a finish where now you can see everything we just did to Captain K. It wasn't so apparent before, but now we have a cool kind of older style, you know, very subtle on the airbrushing side of all about using the tools like washes, edge highlights, angles, and all manner of things. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.